Good day, my name is Mike Perry from African Reptiles and Venom. Uh, I'm going to speak about pythons today and uh, keeping them as pets. So in Africa, we have uh, four species of python. We have two large ones, the Southern African python, Python natalensis, the African python, Python sabaea. Then we have two dwarf pythons, the bull python, this is the one I'm holding here, called the uh, Python regius, and then we have the Angolan dwarf python, the um, and cheetah python, python and cheetah. Now, in terms of keeping them as pets, the smaller ones are the better ones to keep as pets. The large pythons, the python natalensis and python sabaea, become too big. They are um, aggressive snakes. They strike and uh, they become um, difficult to handle. And so they do not make good pets. But the smaller ones, they make very good pets. And in fact, the ball python, the snake you see me holding here, is one of the most popular pets in the world. There are probably uh, 50 or more color morphs being um, bred. And uh, some people just do ball pythons. That's all they do. They make a living out of breeding and selling ball pythons. Uh, in terms of your uh, cage, arrangement. Uh, they don't need a very large cage because they don't grow very big. This is kind of a uh, average size uh, ball python. You can see there the size of the snake. They can get bigger than this, but most of the times this is what you're looking at. Uh, these are rodent feeders, so it's very easy to uh, buy uh, pre-killed frozen rodents, keep them in the deep freeze, and then just thaw out the one that you want to feed to your python. Um, a meal once a week is normally sufficient for these snakes. If they don't move too much, you can stretch that out to maybe once every two weeks so they don't become obese. Um, in terms of the uh, popularity, as I said, this is the most popular one. The Angolan uh, dwarf python uh, are being bred more and more in captivity and uh, they're also becoming uh, very popular. Um, in terms of their behavior and their characteristics, the bull pythons are very, very good. I've had a few bull pythons that would strike out, but most of the times these snakes are very placid. They hardly ever strike out. If it is a strike, it's a feeding response. They've smelt a rodent. Maybe you've picked up something with your hands and they might strike at that. So that's something you've got to be careful of. Um, as I said, um, very, very popular pets. And this is like a normal color. And you get them in all kinds of different colors. I have seen uh, ball pythons mainly in captivity uh, until I started doing uh, my snake training courses at the mines in West Africa. And then you come across these snakes actually in the wild. You think, oh, somebody's pests escaped, but no, it's not their pet that escapes. That's where they occur naturally. So in the West African countries, they are fairly common snakes, and you can kind of you can come across them while you're just driving around, snake crossing the road. Um, these snakes in uh, in uh, West African countries are uh, what we call ranged. So they'll catch the gravid females. They'll keep the female until she's dropped her eggs. And then those uh, reptile dealers will hatch the eggs and then they export the hatchlings. Uh, the females are then released back into the wild so that they can do their thing again. And hopefully next year they'll catch them, grab it again. In terms of numbers of pythons that have been uh, exported, I don't have figures, but I'm sure it is uh, hundreds of thousands that have been exported. Um, they seem to still maintain their fair numbers. So it seems like they are uh, quite resilient. Uh, I think if you uh, leave them alone for a while, they will really become um, a very common snake in West Africa. Uh, nice rodent feeders. So they're actually good to have around. It's a non-venomous snake can't uh, hurt anybody, but they're very good at catching rodents 
And in terms of uh, rodents, you don't want too many rodents around if you are a crop farmer, because the rodents will destroy your crops. The African python, uh, Python sabaea, is the largest snake found in Africa. Uh, these snakes can reach six meters in length. They are uh, belligerent snakes, often striking out. Um, I've seen these snakes mainly in West Africa, where the size that I've seen was probably only two and a half meters in length, so not very large. Um, and there was a mixed bag. Some of these uh, snakes didn't strike at all. They were quite friendly. Then some of them you had that were just the other way around. They just want to take, take you out. They don't want anything to do with you. Uh, they're very colorful snakes. Uh, for that, I um, think that people might want to uh, keep them because they are far more colorful than the Southern African python. Uh, but uh, their size is against them. So, in my opinion, it's not a good snake to keep as a pet. Uh, they are uh, ambush hunters because of their large, heavy size. They will wait for prey in a suitable uh, position to come near them so they can, with a very lightning fast strike, secure the prey, get those uh, teeth into the uh, snout or scruff of the neck of the prey animal and quickly throw some coils around the uh, chest cavity of the animal and then start the constriction which once again um, very quickly stops the breathing and the circulation in the body of the prey animal um, these large pythons uh, used to be very common but um, in many african countries they have uh, seen a severe decline in their numbers because they are hunted for meat, for their skin, for uh, mooty. And um, for that reason, uh, habitat destruction and uh, any kind of development is uh, something that's going to affect their numbers in the future. They are protected snakes. I think in most African countries, these snakes have some form of protection. Internationally, they are protected by uh, the CITES. Uh, they are on a Schedule 2 of CITES. Um, so they offer that protection for uh, cross-border um, trade of these snakes. Uh, in terms of um, keeping them as a pet, as I said, they are too large, they are belligerent, they are not really a, a good pet snake. If you find the odd one that has a uh, nice dis disposition that it doesn't strike out, it might make a reasonable pet. But what you need to realize with large snakes is they eat large prey animals and when they go to the toilet, it's a real mess. Uh, you'll keep a large snake like that for a year and then you decide, no, it's not worth it. Um, I can't carry on cleaning this cage. It's just too much work and you'll get rid of the snake. Uh, so for that reason, I would rather advise if you want a python, get one of the smaller size pythons, the uh, Southern African python, Python natalensis. So this is a very common python in uh, Southern Africa. We find them in what we call bushveld areas. It's more the north and um, eastern parts of the country. They like savanna habitat low-lying savanna habitat. They're very fond of uh, water, so I often find them near rivers. They use water as a means of uh, ambushing prey, where they'll be hiding in the water with just the uh, nostrils and eyes sticking out, and then try and ambush any prey that comes to the edge of the water to uh, drink water. Uh, these pythons are not uh, very good uh, pet snakes. They are often uh, belligerent. They'll strike out and uh, strike many, many times to try and get you to stay away from them. They grow large. A typical adult uh, Southern African python is a snake between three and four meters. When they're that size, they have a body mass between uh, 25 to 40 kilograms. Uh, the large ones are normally females, the males are normally smaller. 
these pythons are uh, ambush hunters. They will find a game trail lying um, under a bush next to the game trail, wait for a suitable animal to pass by. A uh, lightning fast strike secures a grip on the prey so it can't run away and then they quickly crawl around the chest cavity to exert the constriction power which in 20 seconds will stop the breathing and the circulation and the python keeps that grip for at least three minutes and then the prey is uh, then dead. The prey is normally swallowed head first. Um, a large meal like something like an impala will be enough protein for this python for at least three months. Um, when they swallow large prey like that, it takes a long time for them to uh, actually in, get that prey down the, uh, down the throat into the stomach. It could take hours. The windpipe that ends in the mouth sticks out like a little snorkel to allow the snake to every now and again breathe. And then when it wants to swallow again, it closes the windpipe, swallows, and then stops and breathes. And slowly, slowly, the prey goes down. Uh, the stomach juices are uh, very powerful. They can digest the tissue and bone. They do not, however, digest the males, teeth, hair, hooves, horns, and hair, and porcupine quills. So when the snake has digested their prey, all that left over is in the stomach, it then carries its way through the gut and out the other end when the snake goes to the toilet. Um, if you examine the um, feces of pythons, you can maybe find out what prey items they have eaten. Porcupine quills is easy to see because the quills are long. Um, hair might be a little bit more difficult. Um, as I said, a large meal like this, um, within about two or three weeks, that solid mass is turned into a protein soup where the snake can then absorb the nutrients from the prey. And that's enough nutrients for three months for the snake. He doesn't have to eat again. Although large pythons can catch uh, calves and can be prob problem animals when you are farmers, uh, they're not nearly as problem as a, uh, as a leopard would be on a farm. A large python might eat three of these uh, calves. If you have a leopard on the farm and it is into your cattle, it's probably going to eat one calf per week. So it's going to eat 50, 52 calves in a year. So uh, a python is nothing compared to a leopard. These uh, pythons have heat sensing pits on the upper jaw. Uh, these heat sensing pits are designed to pick up the heat signature of warm-blooded prey and it allows these snakes to then strike at uh, warm-blooded prey, catch their prey in pitch darkness. Uh, in the mouth, these snakes have from 80 to 96 needle sharp recurve teeth. Um, these teeth in large python, in the python of 4 meters, those teeth can be uh, 10 millimeters long in the front of the mouth. And because of this mouth with all these teeth, uh, you've got to be careful to not sustain a python bite. Uh, if a python bites me on the arm here, they bite and release. That's the way of doing things. Right. If you pull away, you might cut yourself. It's like cutting your arm with a bow saw that you use for cutting branches. It's a similar type of wound. But you've got to be careful with pythons. If they cut arteries that are close to the surface, you'll be um, you'll have a medical emergency where the blood is squirting each time the heart pumps. So although python is not venomous, you must regard them as dangerous. Um, we don't see pythons attacking humans. Uh, they normally eat uh, farm animals as well as dogs and other small prey like. Um, antelope, hares, uh, guinea fowl, uh, cane rats, and uh, dussies. Uh, ambush uh, predators, as I said. Uh, mating pythons. Pythons mate in the winter months in southern Africa. 
So in the months of May, June, July, August, um, the males will track where the female is, and there might be um, a number of males that will be attracted to a single female. Mating takes place in those uh, four months. By October, November, the female python will be ready to lay a clutch of eggs. Uh, she goes underground. We have these uh, artfark burrows. These burrows are about uh, 40 to 50 centimeters wide. They go four meters deep underground and from the one entrance to the other entrance it could be 25 meters. Down underground there you have a nice even temperature of 20 to 22 degrees Celsius. So the python goes underground and lays the clutch of eggs. But now what she'll do is she'll come out to bask every morning. She comes out during this period, her skin becomes very dark, so she can absorb a lot of heat quickly. She basks until her body reaches 39 to 40 degrees, and then she goes underground again, crawls around the eggs, she transfers that heat to the clutch of eggs. Tomorrow she comes out again, and she's going to do this for 90 days until those eggs are fully developed and little snakes are ready to come out. Baby pythons, when they hatch like this, are normally about 50 to 60 centimeters in length. And as soon as they've shed their skin for the first time, they disperse into the bush and they start hunting small prey. Normally uh, mice and rats is what they will be targeting. They grow very quickly. Um, our southern African python in one year can reach a length of uh, 1.8 meters. So from a uh, 60 centimeter snakes, it's uh, tripled its length. Um, second year, it's not going to go as fast. Third year, also not as fast. Uh, large pythons are normally about uh, seven to 10 years old to get to the size that we normally find them. In terms of keeping uh, Southern African pythons as pets, uh, in my opinion, they do not make good pets. Uh, they are uh, large snakes. They can go over four meters in length with a body mass of 40 kilograms, and they are aggressive snakes, often striking out uh, to try and uh, get you to leave their personal space. Uh, and they don't seem to tame down. So even though you've kept the snake for a long time, they still do that. Occasionally, I've had maybe a half a dozen or so uh, Southern African pythons that uh, were not that way inclined. But on the whole, they are. Uh, they're not really nice snakes to keep because of always being in an aggressive mood. Thank you very much for watching this little uh, video on pythons. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, uh, please uh, let us know what your questions are. And uh, I appreciate you watching my videos. If you want to know, know more about snakes, uh, there are two ways you can learn more. We have an online course. So it doesn't matter where you are in the world, you can do the online course. If you want to do it in person, you can attend my training courses here in South Africa. Uh, just uh, send us an email and inquire about the snake training courses. We also supply snake handling equipment and we also supply uh, snake bite first aid kits. Uh, if you in a place where there might be many snake bites and you need to delay the uh, action of the venom to get yourself to a hospital, might be an idea to get yourself a snake bite first aid kit.